Good morning. Be late. Be late. Good morning. How you done being done and Holly? And Mandy. Hey, it's Jenny, Vicky, Tiffany. Good morning. I'm just glad you're here. Good morning. <laughs> we all lucky out here this morning. <laughs> I ain't even kidding. I stayed up way too late working. I think I got like five hours of sleep. Think, but it's all good. I got a busy day, and then maybe I can get my day done and go to bed early tonight. But oh, we kidding? I don't even know what that means. I don't know if that's gonna stay. Good morning. All right, I gotta figure out where we're at. Hey, red baby. Got it. Okay, this morning we're going to be in Daniel. Daniel 3, uh, 8 through 23. Hubby's coming with the coffee. Good morning, Charity. Adrian. Did you even wash my cup or something? Yeah. Look at ya. I should probably just make me another, huh? So I have a couple. <laughs> my office is a mess. My desk is a mess. Your hubby is a mess. I'm a mess. It's all just a mess. <coughs> It's fine. You gonna need a doctor's appointment. You keep coughing like that. You know? Huh? I'm okay. So he says. All right, Daniel 3, and we're gonna be in verse chapter 8, or verse chapter, <laughs> verse 8. <laughs> Let me drink some of this coffee before we have problems. Listen, my mug's still wet. Will you uh, plug in my, um, will you plug in my coaster warmer? Yeah. Did you put ice in this? No, I forgot. Hot, hot, hot. <coughs> this is absolutely, this is one of my favorite scriptures. It is mine too. It's mine too. And I decided this was what we was gonna do when I was on a li when I was on my live last night on TikTok. Um, it was playing a song, and um, the song said something like "Even if you don't," and I was like, "That's so good that even if faith." And then it just hit me, and I was like, "Um, we're doing Daniel three tomorrow morning. It's a happening. Um, so we can talk about that even if faith because this is some good stuff." Because this is some good stuff, and, uh, that even if faith. 
But this is just a really good um, study. And let's just be clear, okay? I don't know how to say all these people's uh, names, okay? Uh, We're going to work on it. We're going to work on it. We got three friends here. And um, we're going to work on it. Bible am I using? Um... An illustrating Bible by Jay Spree. <laughs> I've got to get woke up. When will we finish up John 15, 8 3 through 25? Um, we'll either do it on another coffee talk, Vicky, or we'll finish it up in the mentorship when we um, continue going through these, They're through John, because that's what we're doing right now. But we will, I promise. Because I want a Bible journal it myself. Again, though, I might do a TikTok today on it. I've been meaning to do that. But my to-do list is like this long right now. I could really use, you know, three of me. But there's only one. So. Yay. I love it. You got your Bible journaling kit. And now you get to do Bible journaling with us. I can't even. Oh, look, you go help me say the words. All right. Listen, that ain't what I see when I look at their names. A mendigo, yes. A bendigo. Wait. A bendigo. Huh? A bendigo. A bendigo. So I'm saying that right. But the other two, that, those aren't what I see when I look at it. We got Shadrach. How'd you say that? Say it again. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I dare somebody to name three kids that. Abednego is what she said. I don't know. Do you think you do right? The names in these in the Bible of these people. Like, I would love it uh, if um, somebody named their kid uh, Nebuchadnezzar because that'd be hilarious. Do you see that one comment? Yeah. All right. He's going to it. Perfect. All right. Are you ready, Freddy's? I gotta get my pen out because I need to, uh, I got a point when I read. <coughs> got a point when I read. That coffee is hot. Good morning. Okay. Maybe I'll cool down in a second and I can read it. I mean, drink it. I said read it. <laughs> I'm not. Okay, we can't. <laughs> I gotta get woke up. Holy cow. Okay, are y'all ready? Let's just start because I can't do it. All right. We's are gonna start in verse 9. They said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, May the king live forever. You as king have issued a decree that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, so the harp, drum, every kind of music must fall down and worship the gold statue. Whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. There were some Jews you have appointed to manage the province of Babylon. I didn't say that is that word. Why can't I see the word? Like, man, I don't see the word. Things. That's what I thought it said, but I was thinking it's Shadrach, Meshach, and how'd you say the other one? And Abendigo. He calls him Abendigo. <laughs> okay. Um, these men have ignored you, the king. They do not serve your gods or worship your gold statue you have set up. Then, in a furious rage, Nebuchadnezzar gave orders to bring these three friends. That's how I'm going to say them. So, these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar asked them, So, is it true that you don't have to, that you don't serve my gods or worship the gold statue I've set up? Now, if you're ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, 
heart, drum, every kind of music, fall down and worship the statue I made. That if you don't worship it, you will immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is and who is the God who can rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, Neb Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need, like, this is my favorite part. We don't need to give you an answer to this question. Now, I'm going to underline some things while I'm reading. If the God we serve exists, then he can rescue us from this furnace of blazing fire, and he can rescue us from the power of you, the king. But even if he doesn't rescue us, you, we want you, as king, to know that we will not serve your gods or worship your gold statue you set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with rage, and the expression on his face charged, changed toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He gave orders to eat the furnace seven times more than was customary, and he commanded some of his best soldiers in his armies to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into a furnace of blazing fire. So these men... In their trousers, robes, head coverings, and other clothes were tied up and thrown into the furnace of blazing fire. Since the king's command was so urgent and the furnace extremely hot. This is another point. The raging flames killed the men. Okay, I can't wait to get it. Who carried Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego up. These three men, Chadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell fell bound into the furnace of blazing fire. Y'all know what? We got to keep reading a little bit because we might skip around to do our journal in this morning. So we're going to keep reading just a little bit longer because there's a couple more points. Then King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in alarm and he said to his advisors, didn't we throw three bound men into the fire? Yes, of course, your majesty, they said, replying to the king. He exclaimed, look, I see four men. Not tied, walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like he's a, he's a, looks like a son of the gods. Yep, we're gonna keep reading. I, we we gotta keep going. We're gonna jump around a little bit, but this is gonna be a good story this morning. It's gonna be a good story. We're in Daniel eight, and we're actually like gonna reading verses eight through thirty, um, but. It's going to be really good for Bible Journal, and I promise, we just, we got to get here. We, we just got to get here. All right. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door to the furnace of the blazing fire and called, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, your servants of the Most High God, come out. So, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire with the strap, with the, sh yeah, straps, wait, I don't know how to say that word. I don't know what that is. Governors and the king's advisors gathered around. They saw that the fire had no effect on the bodies of these men. Not the hair on their heads was, was singed. Their robes were unaffected. There was no smell of fire on them. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, please, or praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angels and rescued his servants who trusted him. They violated the king's command and risked their lives rather than serving or worshiping any God except their own God. Therefore, I issue a degree that anyone of any, pe of any people, nation, or language who says anything offensive about the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be torn limb from limb, and his house made a garbage dump. For there is no other God who is able to deliver like this. I love it. Then the king rewarded Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is such a good story. Like, listen here. All right. Making sure it's done. Listen here. Okay. Do y'all, like, realize what just... I love it so much. I love it so much because here's my main points. And then we're going to Bible Journal. Here's my main points. Here's what I love about this story. <coughs> They're even if faith. Okay? Even if they were going to get burned alive, it was not going to change who they worshipped. They were still going to worship the one true God. It didn't matter if they came out of that fire or they didn't. Even if God didn't come through in the way that he, they wanted him to come through, they were still going to worship him. So, how many of us have that even if faith? 
We always are asking God for something. We're always wanting something. God, I want this. God, I want that. Can I do, you know, can you give me this? Can you give me that? But the minute that God don't give us what we ask for, we quit following him altogether. But it's that even if faith, that Lord, I would love to have this, but even if I don't, I will still worship you. Even if you don't deliver me from this, I will still worship you. Even if you don't come through to heal me from this sickness, I will still worship you. It's the even if faith. Even if he don't do what you wish he could. Are you still going to worship him? Ain't that good? And then we go on to say, right? The raging flames. Here, here's something else I want you to see. I told y'all I didn't know if it was going to work. I love this part too. The flames. Right? When the men threw the three friends into the fire, the fire was meant to kill them. But instead it killed the enemy. That their own fire that they made. And he wanted his people to throw in these three friends. Right? But it killed the enemy instead of killing them. So sometimes a fire in your life is meant to remove something. Ain't that good? I can't wait. I can't wait. So the fire that was meant to take them out actually took out the enemy. So maybe the fire that you're that you're dealing with, it ain't meant to take you out at all. It's meant to take them. Nah, huh? Nah, I mean, as a good stuff, as a good stuff, we keep going. We see that Nebuchadnezzar was like, I see four men. There's four men in there. Because God came in the fire with him. He, he sent his people to come in the fire with them. He was walking around in there with them. Keeping them safe and protecting them. Just like he does you when you get through the fire. Just like he is with you. When you look around and you only see two of y'all in there. And you're like, I'm going through this fire of life. God's there too. God's there too. Ain't that good? <laughs> And then here's my favorite part. Well, another favorite part. Y'all know I be getting favorite parts. The fire didn't affect them. They came out unburned. All right? They came out without even touched. Yet the enemy, like three of them, died. But then one of the other best parts is a king had a change of heart because of what he witnessed them doing in the fire. So sometimes the fire that you're going through is to help somebody around you change their mind about God. Ain't that good? Ain't that so good? Like sometimes the fire around you. Let me just say it louder for those in the back. Sometimes the fire you're going through isn't really for you at all. It's for the people that are around you. And what you're getting ready to do is going to change their heart. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. I love this story. I love this story. It's one of my favorites. I love Daniel. I love Daniel, though, by the way. The book of Daniel is so, so good. It's only 12 chapters. Y'all should read the whole thing. Like, it is so good. It's not always about us. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Bethany. Yeah, the pen's an erasable pen. It comes in our Bible journaling kit, which is this. Um, okay. All right. So let's read some, let's read some commentary. Let's read some commentary and get our Bible journaling in this morning because y'all know last time we didn't do none of that. We didn't do none of that. Um, eyes on fire. That coffee is delicious now that I can drink it. I'm I'm tired. We ain't got no more sugar. We ain't got no more sugar. Mm -hmm. This is the only cup of coffee I can have. Unless you want sweet and left. Well, as long as it tastes the same. As long as it does some sort of, like, you know, sweetness. We did. We just did one line because the rest was fire. <laughs> I love it. Divine timing, yes, because you went through that in church. 
put honey in it. Me and Steve have been hearing that. And I keep saying I want to try it, and I don't have no honey. See, I cannot read a verse like you did and get all that out of it. Listen, I've not always been able to do that. That ain't... That is just because, number one, it became part of my calling. And number two, I took the time to study. Before I was ever called into this position that I do right now, as far as reading the Bible and teaching it and helping people understand, I was also the one learning. And I'm still learning. Every single day. Y'all will see me have epiphanies on here when I'm like, ooh, that's so good. And then I like journal it and I gotta read it to y'all. And like, y'all get to see... Y'all get to see my like real lifetime process as far as these stories. But Daniel is one that I have studied a lot. Um, so I don't always get all those things. This is just one of my favorites. So I've, you know, I've studied a lot. But you just got to keep going. And the, yeah, the word of God is alive. Yes, you just got to keep going and keep trying a whole outline of Matthew that goes chapter by chapter. I'm reading out of Daniel 3. I know we ain't already freezing because there's just no reason. Keep studying and God will let you see that. Yes. I put Hershey chocolate syrup in my coffee. That sounds good. That sounds good. I'm about to try that. Your bag. I didn't realize I left. Is it still freezing or are we good? I mean, I don't know why. I have full Wi-Fi. I mean, like, <laughs> what's the issue with this Wi-Fi? Mm-mm-mm. You good now, but it did freeze. Okay, but I'm good now, but I'm good now. They will try to get us to give up. Yes, girl, yes. Okay, let's read some of this. So, these, all right, that threw them into the fire, all right, these, they obviously had a political motivation against the Jews who were prompted to or promoted to high office along with Daniel in the events recorded in the previous chapter. I'm not a quitter. <laughs> I love it. Been in church rest of my life, but never learned to study the Bible. So thank God I found your page. Aw, thank you. I got my illustrating Bible yesterday, and I'm a bit afraid to write in it. Do it. Write in it. You're going to love it. Write in it. Okay. All right. We're not public, but we're neither hidden. These three Hebrew men must have known they would be discovered. Yet they obeyed God rather than men. Yeah, that's what I was going to write. You will not be able to go through life without being discovered. A light, a lit candle cannot be hid. There is a feeling among some good people that it will be wise to be very redundant. I don't know. Hide their light under a bushel. We're not doing that. Um, they intended to lie low all the wartime and come out when the song, palms were being distributed. What are they even writing this morning? They hope to travel to heaven. Okay, I understand half of it. They hope to travel to heaven in the back lanes. So what, what he's talking about is... Uh, that commentary, he went off on a little, like, I don't know what he was talking about, quite frankly, but I do get what he's saying. He is saying that these three friends, all right, stood up for what, for, for what they believed in. 
and they didn't do it hidden. And it wasn't necessarily public about it either um, at first, but they didn't do it hidden. We see that in verse 8, we see that these people came forward, all right, to accuse the Jews. So they obviously had an agenda um, towards the Jews, right? They had this agenda towards them. So they brought it to the king's attention. Hey, they won't bow down and worship what you say. And these three friends, okay, didn't try to hide their faith, but they didn't exactly, you know, proclaim it either up until this point, okay? So what he is saying is some people, we are not meant to hide our light. We're not meant to light our candle and put something over it because that's going to put it out. We are meant to shine our light. We are meant to stand up for things that, that we believe in. We are meant to, to shine so brightly that we can get to other people, right? Yes, it is the same as the She Reads Truth Bible. Okay, so that's our first little note. All right, I'm going to make my little bracket things that I always make. And we're going to do um, verses 8 through 11. Okay? And I'm going to make my little brackets around it. All right? It'd be, be like that. I just kind of mark those verses, okay? And the note is going to be... They brought forth the dog snoring. Eight through eleven. They brought forth the three men. Who wouldn't obey? All right. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Was there something else? I don't think so. Ow. They had her patrol. Okay. So. They brought forth the three men who wouldn't obey what the king had asked. Right? And then we're going to keep going. We are in Daniel 3, 8 through 30 is what we're studying right now. All right. And then we got, to his credit, Nebuchadnezzar did not accept the accusation on hearsay. He made sure, uh, well, he made sure of it with a personal interview. Oh, I never realized that was kind of like a personal interview, but I guess it kind of was. This was an even greater test for the three friends. It is the, it, it is one thing to make a stand for God. It is greater to stick to your stand when asked, is it true? Oh, I love it. Peter followed Jesus after his arrest, but he denied Jesus when he was asked if he knew him three times. That is uh, so good. Okay. So, wait a minute here. So, we're going to... Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Where's that? Where is it at? Alright, there it is. Versus... I think it's the end of 14. And the beginning of 15. Cut according to this illustrating Bible. Um, it says, Is it true that you don't serve my gods or worship the gold statue I've set up? And I'm going to draw my arrow, and I'm going to make that note. It's one thing to stand in faith, It's another to stick to it. Well, 
we got to be willing to stand and and back it up when somebody challenges it. I'm getting all my stuff out because we got to use some highlighters. So I'm going to use my green and do my first little note. And uh, I just done my little brackets. And then I'm going to use, I guess, my blue. To do that one. All right. And now we're just going to keep them in order and keep rotating. All right. They have a little note here. Let's see if it's good. It's in it before the heart surgery. Mm, no, we're not going to read. Let's keep going. All right. Nebuchadnezzar would not. We're in Daniel chapter 3. 8 through 30, the last note was, it is one thing to stand in faith, it's another to stick to it. All right, so, let's see, let's see. Nebuchadnezzar would not tolerate, uh, would not tolerate losing face on such an important occasion. His pride made him de declare, you, you shall have no other gods before me. Okay, I mean, we can, I mean, we can, like, know he's prideful. Like, we already got that. Like, I mean, I mean, all right, let's just keep reading. I don't know if I want to take a note on that. Um, Nebuchadnezzar thought nothing of insulting all gods with this statement. He was more of a humanist than a, than a theist? I don't know what they're trying to say. The God he really believes in is himself. Yes, okay. That, that, y'all could have just said it like that. The God he really believes in is himself and not the gods of who he wanted him to worship, the gold statues, and none of that. Um, and that's true. So I guess we can make us a little bit of a little note. And what the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to circle. Nebuchadnezzar's name. I dare somebody name the kid that. And then I am going to just draw me an arrow up to the top. And I'm going to write who he was. Right? He was prideful. And he wanted... Authority. Slash to be worshipped. You know, I really don't think it was as much about that. That these three friends wouldn't bow down to what he's telling people to bow down to. It wasn't that they wouldn't serve his gods. It was that uh, they wouldn't listen to his instruction. You know what I mean? They wouldn't listen to his instruction. And that is what made him mad. But they wouldn't listen to his instruction because it didn't align with how they were supposed to be living for God. Right? So they, what? Made their stand and stood to it. Ain't that, like, that's good. And we're going to highlight his name and go up here and highlight his note with it. I love it so much. So it really wasn't about that they, that you know, about that they wouldn't worship. What It's that they didn't do what he wanted them to do. Right? And sometimes that's how we can find ourselves in a situation where we're supposed to stand up for what's right because we won't do what somebody else asks us to. Right? Because it doesn't align. You're not meant to be a people pleaser. We could see these three men and their stories go so much differently. Right? If they were a people pleaser. If they were a people pleaser, they would have bowed down when the king was like, bow down to this, right? And they didn't because they didn't care about pleasing the king. They didn't care about doing anything except standing up for what was right, right? And we're getting ready to take some notes on my favorite part here. I can't wait. Okay. They had no need to defend themselves, all right? Their guilt in the matter was clear. They clearly would not bow down to this image, right? So... That was the part of 
Y'all, my hair is just like everywhere. There it is. Verse 16, okay? Nebuchadnezzar, listen at this bold statement. This is what I'm going to say. It says, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to give you an answer to this question. Excuse me, bold. Hello? I'm going to put bold. Um, I just literally wrote beside of it the word bold, right? Um, bold. They didn't. Need to defend themselves. They didn't need to defend themselves. They wasn't gonna do it anyway, so they're not they're not gonna uh, bow down to it. I don't really have a color code. We just kind of alternate so we can keep all the colors separate. And I use yes when I do these studies in the morning. We um I show you guys literally how I study the Bible as far as like this is exactly how I studied it when I first started learning it and I used EnduringWord.com I read it from front to back and I picked something to study every single day and I used the commentary so on these coffee talks I'm literally giving you the the actual picture I get all of the questions how do you do this how do you Bible study this is it this is how this is how I do it I bring out my commentary, I read it, I read my Bible, I read the part, and then I and then I journal and I take out the important parts that are important to me. Um the last thing, bold, all right, is what I wrote. They didn't need to defend themselves. We are just studying together. Exactly. What stuff in the Bible should we highlight? I highlight what's important to me, and I highlight my notes to uh, to what verse they are connected with. God plays defense. I like that. I like that. Hello, Ohio. Okay, so bold. They didn't need to defend themselves, right? The Jewish men showed a good understanding and appreciation of God's great power. In fact, they knew that God was able to save them from both the burning fire, the burning fire, all right, and from the hand of Nebuchadnezzar himself. So, they knew God could rescue them. This is where it gets good. They knew God could rescue them. Okay. Your chair's a little squeaky, sir. They got a couple of other little notes that I need to read before I get to my good stuff. Okay. Um. Oh, there we go. There we go. EnduringWord.com. And the Bible commentaries. In this, the Jews measure that they knew God's power, and they okay, but they also knew that they must do what was right, even if God did not do what they expect or hoped Him to do. But yeah, I'm gonna tell you that in just one second. So, because it goes with that whole verse, and it's so you're gonna have to break the verse down. All right, my next little note is. All right, but they knew God could rescue them. But even if he didn't do what they hoped, they would stand They would stand for him anyway. Hello, Texas. We are definitely praying. Okay. So, let me get my colors. We got. All right. It's verse 17. And I'm going to highlight. If the God we serve exists. All right. That goes with the first note. Bold. Wait, no, it don't. Man, I messed up. 
See, y'all even going to get to experience me doing that. That actually needs to be verse 16. Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to, we don't need to answer this question. It's all good. So it's the ne so it's verse sixteen. Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to give you an answer for this question, and that goes with the note bold. They didn't need to defend themselves. All right. The next one is gonna be. All right. I gotta use a different color though. I think. Yeah, that's not gonna do it. That's not gonna do it because I messed up. All right. Now, the next one's going to be, if the God we serve exists. I'm messing up my Bible. Why did I play through? No. Okay. All right. They knew God could rescue them. Is what that note goes with. So, if the God we serve exists, they knew God could rescue them. Right? All right. If they knew he could rescue them, but they still went into the fire not knowing if he would. Yes, I love that. That's a good note. Y'all should write that down. I love it. I love it. And then, but even if he does not rescue us, we want you as king to know that we will not serve your gods. All right? And that goes with the note. But even if he didn't do, if even if God didn't do what they hoped, they stood up for him anyway. They was going to believe in him anyway. That is one of my favorite parts. I got to finish highlighting this. Now, I don't miss. <laughs> See, I make mistakes too. Yes, I love that. But I love this. Just like she said, they knew he could rescue them, but they still went into the fire not knowing if he would. How many of you avoid a fire in your life because you're too scared of what might happen while you're in there? Some of you stay with friendships a lot longer than you should stay with them because you're scared of what life's going to look like without that so said friend. Some of you stay in a situation, and should I say some of us, because I include me in everything, we are too scared to step out in faith, because what if God doesn't come through, and what if this happens to us anyway, right? People, I, you know, me and Steve have conversations like that all the time, and, and I love it because, like, I'm willing to step out in faith. No matter what. And it's just because I've trained myself to be that way. Because I've watched God show up in my life. And one of the things that I am really, really good at. Is seeing God in absolutely everything. And knowing that no matter what, he's going to come through. Because he's never let me down. And he's not a liar. He promised he would come through. And he would. I'm really good at trusting that. Like, but everybody around me, maybe not so much. And uh, sometimes, you know, Steve is, Steve's really good. Steve's really good. But he'll have his little doubt in moments where he comes to me and he's like, yeah, but, you know, what if that doesn't happen? Steve's trained himself to count himself out. Yeah. Yes. Look at you telling on yourself. Steve's trained himself to count himself out. That is what Steve do. Steve do be doing that. Every time something like good comes up in Steve's life, he has never, okay, I watch him do it. Every time I'm like, hey, ask about this. He's like, no, they'll say no. I said, so what if they do, but you'll never know if it could be a yes if you don't ask. But he counts himself out. He sees something, he sees something that he, that he likes or he wants or he thinks would be great. He won't ask about it. He's counted himself out already. And I watch him do that. I'm over here standing in faith. And he is, he'll, he'll come, he'll stand with me for a moment. But then he'll have a little bit of self-doubt. And he's like, hey, maybe we really do need to talk about this. What happens if this happens? And I said, it's not going to. And he's like, how do you know? Or like, but what if it does? It really could. I said, no, sir. Don't waver from your faith. Because the devil's trying to make you scared. Don't do that. God's going to come through. 
And it may not look like we think it's going to look like. They didn't know that they'd come out that far. They could have come out dead as dead. Okay, ashes. Yes, they could have. But it didn't matter to them. They were going to go in it. And if it burned them up, fine. And if they came out, fine. But no matter what, they were serving God. And that is how I look at my life. If I go in it and I don't come out, fine. But I'm still serving God. But if I do go in it and come out, man, think of the testimony that I'm going to get, that I'm going to be able to give for the glory of God, right? Like, even if he didn't come through in the way that he, they wanted him to come through with, they wasn't going to wave. So how many of you can start living like that? Having that, but even if you don't faith. Next time you go into a trial, I want to encourage you, say it to yourself. Hey, God, I really want this job. I really want this job. But even if you don't, I'm still going to trust in you. Hey, God, I really want this house. But even if you don't, I'm still going to trust in you. Hey, God, I really want to do this with my life. But even if you don't, I'm still going to trust in you. Right? Even if you're not getting what you wish to be getting. How strong are you still going to stand? Right? Oh, that was cute. Thank you for the little lollipop thingies. Amen. He will provide when the time is right. Yes. Yes. Trust in his timing is a big, big thing. Yes, I love that. God will take care of us in life, death, no matter what happens. That's right. That's right. All right. So, let's read. Let's read some of this really quick. All right. We often complain about our rights and what is fair. Uh, these are just some of their notes. It kind of sounds, you know, similar <laughs> to what I've already said. We often complain about our rights, what is fair, often to make it to make a stand or endure a difficulty. Leaving our fate in God's hands is what we need to do. They did not doubt God's ability, but neither did they presume to know his will. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, I got to write that down. That one's got to be wrote down. That one's got to be wrote down word for word because, oh, that's good stuff. That's just got to be an extra note right here. Um, We're going to write that down. Wait a minute. And I'll tell you why I love it so much in a second. All right. They did not doubt God's ability. But they also didn't assume that they knew God's will. I love it. Okay. That note is going in just a little box. Because it's important. You want to know why that's significant? You know why that's so significant? They didn't doubt God's ability. But they also didn't assume that they knew God's will. Because when you're asking for something in your life. When you're asking for something in your life. You should only want it. If it's in God's will for your life. So anytime, right now, me and Steve are in this season. We're in this season where we got a lot going on. Um, we're in this season of there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes that I really can't share with you guys yet. But when the time is right, I promise to do so. And um, it's been it's been something and it's quite stressful. But what I keep telling myself over and over again is, hey. If it's in God's will, he'll come through. What's meant for us will be for us. No matter what it is or where it is, that's how God works. 
If I will stand in my faith, if I will keep going where he's telling me to go, if I will be intentional and focused in my work, if I will do exactly what he has called me to do and take care of the business that I'm supposed to take care of, if I will be faithful when I don't see it coming, then he'll bring it through. He'll bring it through. He'll bring it through. And I don't ever doubt God's ability. But I don't ever assume that I know God's will. So anytime I ever ask for anything in my life, I say, Lord, I love this one. I like this one a lot. But Lord, if it's not in your will, don't let it go through. Only let it go through what's in your will. Because I don't want nothing that's out of God's will. Right? If it's in God's will for me. And I want to promise you something else. Um, that right there will save you a whole lot of heartache. A whole lot of heartache, a whole lot of um, worrying, a whole lot of being disappointed. Because if you go into it with the attitude, hey, I love this, I want this, right? But if it's not in God's will, don't put me there. If it's not in your will, don't place me there. Then when you don't get it, then you are, you, you know. That wasn't God's will for my life. Lord, thank you for not sending me there. Because I wasn't supposed to be there. And if I did... I wouldn't be walking in your will. Y'all, I don't know about y'all, but I never want to be walking outside of his will. Not for my life. God has proven to me that he is faithful. He has proven to me that he will do abundantly more than I could ever ask for. He has proven to me that he will show up on time every single time, even when I feel like it's late. He's right on time. He's proven that to me. Sometimes you got to be willing to walk through that fire. Yes. He's proven he's on time for me. He's proven he'll show up in my fire. So, if it ain't of your will, sir, Lord, if it ain't, say no then. Say no and that's fine. I'm good. Say no and that's fine. You know, will you experience a little bit of disappointment sometimes? Maybe. 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 But if you will train yourself to not want it. To not want it. If it ain't in his will. Okay. I, just let me promise you something. You don't want it. You don't want anything in your life. That's going to take you out. Of his will for your life. Because anything you could possibly want. Anything you could possibly want. Will look. A thousand times better. When you let him do it his way and in his will. And I can promise you that 110% and I will not waver from it. Right? That is so good. That is so good. Okay, so I write that down. That was enough. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep reading. What time is it? 8.30. All right. How y'all do that so fast? I mean, how we do that so fast? How we do that so fast? I mean, for real. Okay. These were men. I need to drink my coffee. <clears throat> what? Here's what the note says. I was reading it because before I read it out loud because I wanted to know what it says. But here's what they said. If these men, these men who did not love too much, there are popular self-help books that hope to help people who seem to love too much. Yet, many Christians are hindered because they love too much. Remember that early Christians were not thrown to the lions because they worshiped Jesus, but because they would not worship the, worship the emperor. I don't, I don't really know how I feel about that. Um, and maybe they're trying to mean something that I don't see. I mean, I guess I get where you can uh, 
you can love the wrong person too much and it gets you into trouble. I mean, I can see that. I can also see where you need to create boundaries in your life because the Bible talks about boundaries. But... I do not understand the not to love too much because Jesus' whole mission was to love those who are unlovable. So, I don't know about that one. What do you think about it? I don't know about that one. You see what it's saying? Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't. You want to listen? Perfect. <laughs> So, there is a whole book, and it's called Boundaries. Um, and it's really good. Uh, it's a whole book, and it's called Boundaries, and it's biblical. It helps you create boundaries in your life, and it includes the word with it. If you're wanting to learn about boundaries, it's a really good place to start. You're hilarious. I love it. Glad I found you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, y'all are so sweet. We tend to love the wrong things and create idols in our life. Is that what you got out of the note? I like it. Is that what you got out of what I read? So you don't think that it was talking about loving people. You think it was talking about loving the wrong things. I could probably, I could probably see that. Um... I like that. I like that. So maybe that is, uh, maybe that's what it is talking about. Maybe it's talking about um, loving, like not worshiping things like they were worshiping idols. I like that. So maybe that, you might be onto something there. Because I was like, they can't be talking about people. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, hi. Yeah, that's who I just said hi to. It is a red cover, but I don't know the author. Yeah, uh, I don't even, I don't have another, um, can I see your tablet? Y'all were talking about that boundaries book. Hold on, I'll, get, I'll tell y'all. I have it upstairs on my bookshelf. You want to go get it? No. I'm looking it up on Amazon to just show them the, the who the author is. It's by Dr. Henry Cloud and Dr. John Townsend. Townsend. This is what it looks like. Okay. It's a really good book. It is biblical. Here you go. And they do talk about it. Can be people or things. God should be first. Yes, I love that. Debbie Wright. Debbie Wright. I had that book and I love it. Yes, I did too. I've been reading on it. I need to read the whole thing, but I love to read, but I'm a little busy. Just found it. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. In our day... Many do love Jesus and think highly of him, yet they are afar from God because they also love and worship the world, sin, and self. Yes. Um, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I love it. I love it. Amen. Yes. Yes. That is good. I love it. And that's kind of what you were just saying in your, in your little note. Yes, you should definitely read that book. It is very good. Okay. Let it be known we do not serve your gods. Um, it took a great step of faith to say this. God brought them to this place of great faith by preparing them with tests in, in less dramatic areas. These men stood firm when challenged to eat empire foods and saw God bless their obedience. That gave them the courage to obey now when the stakes were much higher. And many fall in their obedience because they wait for something big to test their faith before they really start to obey God. Some fill their life with many 
sl small comp uh, compromises, yet tell themselves that they will stand firm when it really matters. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego show us that obedience to God in small things really matters. Yes, I have said it and I'll say it again. You have to be faithful in the small things. Coffee Talk Turn Book Club, hello. <laughs> you have to be faithful in the small things. Um, God had prepared them with other little tests, just like he prepares us with lots of little things. It's up to us if we take that, that molding, that correction, that learning period, all right, that lesson. We have to be the one to accept those things. But it's being faithful in the small things first. And being faithful in the small things turns to faithfulness in big things. But you got to be faithful in the small to get to the big. All right. Uh, we're going to put... God had prepared them for this moment. All right, let's see, let's see. And that also goes with verse 18. Y'all, we could bubble map verse 18 because there's so much here. Whoops. That was not the right color. That's okay. I fixed it. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I fixed it. All right, let's keep going. Uh, we got a little bit longer, and then we might have to finish this up on Saturday morning. All right. Let it be known to you, O King, the statement of Shadrach, Mejak, and Bendigo is also remarkable for what it does not have. Ooh, any hint of excuse. In a time of testing like this, is it is easy to think of a thousand excuses that seem to justify a compromise. They might have said there is nothing to gain by resisting. Wouldn't we do more good by living? It is easy to say we must live, but in reality, we all must die. So why not make, die making a stand for God? Yes. They might have said we are in a different place in Rome as do the Romans. Yet they know that God had ultimate jurisdiction. We must do more than performed acts of religious obedience when we have an audience, they could have said we'll lose our jobs for standing for living. Oh Lord, okay. Um, all doing God blesses us. We make a bless we we make the blessing an idol and compromise with God to keep what we have. They might have said, after all, we're not being called to renounce God. They did not have a super ecstatic uh, conscience that said, we're not bowing down to an idol, but only bowing down to respect the king. But excuses like this are common, but prove the principle that anything will serve as an excuse when the heart is dependent or is bent on compromise. I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what right now. They might have said everybody else is doing it. Uh, oh. Um, oh, not willing to stand with God alone. They might have said it is only for once and not for very long. Uh, it's it's stupid to throw our, way, our lives away for 10 minutes. But that 10 minutes could change their entire life. Mm, mm, mm. This is some good stuff. This is some good stuff. They might have said this is more to be expected of us. And God will understand if we just do it this one time. And it is true that God understands our struggle with sin. That is why he loves the sinner and made provision on the cross for freedom. But knowing that God understands should be superior to obedience, not a license to sin. Yes, I wish Haley was on here because me and her was talking about that. I'm glad that the three only children 
were not careful to answer. Or they might have fallen upon some crooked policy or lame excuse for compromise. I love that. I love that. We didn't see them not make one excuse. But man, I feel like we need to make like a... a and I'm going to make one. And it's going to go with this little study thingy. Uh, I don't know. I may, I may not. But I'm, I'm going to write it anyway. Excuses. <clears throat> Excuses first. I'm just going to put doing what's right right now. I might make me something with that because those are good examples. I mean, how many times do you waver in your faith because you bring up an excuse? I'm going to put it down right here. And I'm going to find where that is. Da, 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 da. Or I'm, I, I don't even know where it's at. I'm just going to put it there. I'm going to make it cute with some little, little dot. The three friends didn't make an excuse. Oh, I don't know. They didn't try. To compromise with God. Man, that could be such a lesson. Such a lesson right there. How many times have you told God, but if you will do this, I'll do this for you. Oh my goodness. If you do this for me, I'll do this for you. How many times you said that? Because I know you have. Because I have at one point in my life. Lord, if you'll show up in this situation, I promise to never do that again. If you will stand up first. Okay. If you'll do it just because doing it. Okay. Doing that thing means that you're standing up for God and you're not doing it because because of anything else other than you want to. That's when God will show up. He ain't going to show up based on your on your compromise. With whatever is going on in your life, he's not going to show up because of that. He's going to show up when you stand up. And you don't expect to compromise. You just do what is right. They didn't try to compromise. They trusted him fully. Yes. They did. And that is so good. That is so good. Y'all, I think we're going to stop for today. It's 8.45. I don't even want to. But I got so much work to do today. But this is so good. But we're going to have to finish it on Sunday morning. Because we still got a whole section to go. I really don't want to, but I guess I need to. It's so good. Uh, no matter how brave. This is really good, but I just can't start it. We can't. We're going to have to stop for the day. This is so depressing. Why we got to do this for? I got so much work to do today. We're going to stop at uh, verse 19. I'm going to make me a note. I was going to keep doing those. I was going to keep doing it because, uh, but then it's got like really long lessons. So, you know, I can't not read those. You know, we can't not read those. So we'll get through the next half on Saturday. I'll be caught up on my list of to do's. So hopefully, um, I can get, we can just like study our little hearts out. Bye, Charity. Go have a great day. 
And the song and others in the fire is playing on the radio right now. I love that so much. Where is your study Bible on your site? I couldn't find it. I don't have any Bibles on my site. Um, I get all of my Bibles off of Amazon. This is not a study Bible. This is a journaling Bible. It's, it will not be, it will not help you study. I'm so thankful God brought your Bible studies to me. Ah, you're so sweet. This was an amazing lesson. I'm so glad y'all loved it. Um, we'll do the rest of it on Saturday morning. Saturday morning, uh, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll get the rest of it. I mean, look at all of our notes so far. Oh, my goodness. I love it. Ain't it cute? I mean, it's just so cute. I love it so much. Um, so the hope box is not open, so you will not be able to buy a hope box. Not till the end of this month. I suggest signing up for the text message alerts, um, because that is, we will send out those when, um, when we launch them again. The Hope Box is, a, it can be a subscription or a one-time box, but it does close at certain times every month. Uh, I, it's just what we wrote down today. I take my notes and I turn them into digital downloads so you guys can have them. But I don't take pictures of my Bible, really, and send them to people uh, because... This is for my kids, and I like to protect that, and I like to have that, and this is what I'm passing down with them. Um, so, but I do create digital downloads with my notes to help you guys create notes in your Bible and study. Oops. What was that? Hold on. I did not know that I could blow up the comments like that and be able to see them. Now, that was cool. Watch. Come here. I'll show you. All right. Ready? Cool. How cool is that? I did not realize I could make them blow up like that. Yours won't do that. You're not the... You're not... Uh, yeah, I went to them off the... <laughs> Okay. All right, you guys. I love y'all so big. I hope this was good for you this morning. I got lots of work to do today. I got to get a lot of stuff done. Today we done Bible study on uh, Daniel chapter 3. We're going to finish it up on Saturday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Any pagan lives today? I don't think so. I done a live yesterday uh, making stuff. So I don't know if I'll do one today. What is today? Thursday? Right? Yeah. We also have kids orientation for school today. We got another appointment. Emma's got cheer. Yeah. We just got a lot going on today. So probably not today. But I might do a pack. I'll probably do a pagan live on Friday or so. All right. I love you guys. I hope y'all have an amazing rest of your day. I'll see y'all Saturday morning and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye guys.